Welcome to Fantasy Football Hub. Today, I'm joined by Wes, aka FPL Heisenberg, to preview the upcoming game week, Game Week 35. Now, we're recording this midway through Double Game Week 34, so our arrows, the colours of the arrows at least, are only temporary, but Wes, so far, it's been a very good game week for you. Yeah, it's been a decent one, mate. 68 minus four uh, with a decent-ish green to make up for my smallish red last week, so yeah. A good upward uh, trajectory for my team over the last, I want to say, eight or nine game weeks. And yeah, this was a week that I was sort of heavily planned for with previous hits. Uh, you know, a few games ago when I did that big hit. So now it's coming to, uh, coming to fruition. Is that the right phrase? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. But yeah, I think the only disappointment for me was, um, you know, new, normally Newcastle clean sheet doesn't matter too much. And I guess it didn't matter that much this week, but uh, because I think most people had one of Trippier. You know, most people had Trippier playing and then the likes of me had Shah. But mm. yeah, I was kind of, I think just to, you know, against free hitters who would have gone big on double game week players, then a Newcastle clean sheet could have been a slight differential. And I guess the Brighton players, um, March and Matoma blanking in the 6-0 win because of, they had their minutes reduced, didn't they? It was a yeah. yeah, frustrating thing. That's tough. Other, that is a frustration. But other than that, um, returns all round. So yeah, happy days. Interestingly, you played Shah over Trippier. Can you can you explain yeah. that decision? I can, yeah. So I was looking at some uh, from just watching games myself when I've I've had players like Shah on my bench and I've been worried about him getting points and stuff like that. Or mm. I've had even when I, I free hit Shah out that week when he ended up getting a brace of assists against Spurs, which was a bit frustrating. Um, yeah. And again, just because sh the, I've had Shah in my team for a long time now, but mainly bench him, and I'd you know I'd never even consider starting him over Trippier. But I just thought this week. In my head, I felt like Shah was the, had the more attacking threat, especially the bigger goal threat. Obviously, I assumed that Trippy would have the bigger assist threat with all the set pieces and stuff. And then I looked at some stats on Hub, um, Hub's comparison tool. I think I put this in a tweet as well. Uh, if you go to my Twitter page, scroll down, you should be able to find it. I haven't tweeted that much recently. Um, but there was a gra the, the graph was basically Trippy was ahead on the big chances created stat and the creative stats, but Shah had the bigger goal threat. There was also okay. the goal disallowed in the game away at Everton, which wouldn't obviously go down in the stats, but that yeah. was quite unlucky to be disallowed. So I just thought that maybe I'll, I'll risk Trippier getting an assist for maybe the hope of Shah getting a goal. Um, but yeah, watching the highlights back of that one, I didn't watch the 90 minutes. It was kind of one of those where they both created, Shah didn't look like scoring. Apart from that own goal, he was kind of close to. And um, Trippier got unlucky not to get an assist for Botman in the start of the second half. But then in the 90th minute, when you know, and Callum Wilson hit the bar for his hat-trick, yeah, that uh, that would have been a Shah assist, which was seemed crazy oh, to me. Wow. It was the ninetieth minute; it was in play, and Shah just finds himself the, the centre back for Newcastle. When that was him, really on, on the right. I, yeah, that, wow, I didn't, I did not know that. Okay, he was just on enough. the right. He was on the right wing, and instead of just trying to like hold out for the just to guarantee the three points, they just went for another goal. And I, don't, yeah, I have no idea what Shah was doing there, but yeah, I, I think enough. I just don't think it was necessarily. I think I, it could have stung, and obviously Trippy was the highly owned asset, of course, but. I didn't pick Shah just to like try and be differential. Like, oh, yeah. everyone's got Trippier, so I'll, I'll gamble on Shah because even though he's a worse asset, I didn't think that I felt like Shah was the best asset this week slightly. So I went for it. Uh, but yeah, it was a kind of non-event in the end. Yeah, I mean, that, it makes sense with the, with your with your reasoning, just like an upside play, not trying to be differential for the yeah. sake of it. But if you think there are points to be made there, then, then yeah. why not? Speaking of which, you do have some very fun players in your team. The likes of Isak is already in your side. I want to talk about him because he's a player that a lot of us who don't own are going to be looking at in future game yeah. weeks. Let's talk about him v Wilson for the upcoming game yeah. weeks and which it's one you're thinking you'd rather have right now. Yeah, it's really tricky, isn't it? I think it might be worth, if you don't have either, the play might be to actually wait until double game week 36, especially with, I'm not saying Arsenal keep a clean sheet, especially with their injury issues at the back and they just don't seem to keep clean sheets these days. So Isaac and Wilson, well, Isaac, sorry, could definitely get points, but by waiting one week, you're actually giving yourself that extra information on who's more likely to get more minutes in 36. Yeah. Um, there's also the play where you could get both. Mm. And for someone like me, who's, you know, I've already got triple Newcastle, could I this week? I know we're going to talk about my team a bit later, but, and I'll get back to the Isaac versus Wilson point in a minute. But for me, I uh, am potentially considering a move off one of my Newcastle defenders this week for, say, a City defender ahead of their double and ahead of Leeds at home. Um, and then that frees up obviously a Newcastle slot so I can get in Wilson for maybe Greenwood 
financially yeah. it's not going to quite work i don't think without the need for a minus four though um so that's what i've got way up and also you know maybe newcastle do pull off newcastle's clean sheets have dried up haven't they since the sort of world cup so it, it kind of makes sense but does it make sense for a minus four it also means that if i do do that and if i forget would have uh, you know, I've got Greenwood in for the reason of not having bench headaches for the rest of the season, essentially. But I would then be in double game weeks, yeah, in double game week 36 when I play both Isaac and Wilson. I'd have to bench one of my really good midfielders, um, okay. the likes of a March or a Matoma, and that, that could sting. Sorry, they're, they're going to have the double as well. I mean, I'd have to bench probably the likes of a Salah, Rashford, Fernandez, or Haaland because they're, they're yes, the ones yeah. without doubles. Yeah. So it, that, that's why. It's a minus four for me to achieve the Wilson and Isaac combo, which should do well. Um, but it gives me an incredible benching headache in double game at 36 because I'll have to bench a real premium player in that one, which I don't really want to do. And again, that could backfire. So it's a minus four and it's the points the bench player would get. Yeah, because I guess if you stuck with the with the double defence, then you'd be benching a defender who has a, a single game week rather exactly, than yeah. one of your yeah, one of yeah, your, one of your attackers. Just, you know, I've resigned my fact resign myself to benching Pinnock for the rest of the season, even in good fixtures. And then I'd probably bench, I think it will be Shaw at home to Wolves in that double or yeah. maybe Trent away at Leicester. Yes, they'll probably score points, but it will just have to be a necessary evil to to get them in. Yeah. And then obviously like it, you save yourself the minus four as well. And we know Trippi and Shah, they're not just defenders who only get clean sheets. They do have attacking threat. As we saw last game, despite them not actually registering those assists, they still both created chances. Okay then, so let's, so let's do your... Your transfers now. I've got your team up yes. on the on the fantasy football hub my team tool, and let's just you know right now. So the deadline was coming up. What would you do yes. right now for the next game week? Yes, and just one more thing. I, I I'm conscious I didn't properly answer the Wilson versus Isaac question. I sure. kind of related that to my own team. So just quickly on that, if I, if I had neither and I was going to get one in, I think it's really difficult. I don't know who I choose straight off the bat. Just to say that. Mm. Um, obviously Wilson's returns per minute is incredible right now I think it's um, only two starts in his last seven appearances which isn't great you know usually for FPL but he's got something like again I tweeted from Hub actually this stat something like eight I think it's eight goals one assist but only two starts so he's coming off the bench wow. and getting braces he's he's coming off the bench with he's not only just getting like the last 10 minutes he's getting like 45 minutes in certain times so I think what I'm trying to get at is that Wilson can score points regardless of how many minutes. He's playing that well that surely and Isaac and Wilson on the pitch together is working really well. Isaac off the left. I can see how eventually saying, okay, that's going to be the formation. Wilson's going to be the number nine. Isaac's going to be left wing of a front three. And they will both start playing together. That's what I'm hoping as an Isaac owner as well, because rather than sharing minutes with Wilson, that's better. Um, but I guess you've got to go for the one that's, you know, I've got Isaac, I'm happy with him, but yeah. I think you've got to go for the one scoring scoring those goals and in such red hot goal scoring form and the, the player who will play down the middle when he does play and Isaac will probably feed him with chances and Isaac and sorry and Wilson will finish them off he's in such red hot goal scoring form I think I would possibly sway towards Wilson right now I wouldn't worry about their sort of expected minutes for both of them get one of them for the double and if it's Wilson and he gets reduced minutes we, we know what he can do in reduced minutes so yeah I think that's how I'd play I think I would edge towards Wilson what would what do you say out of those two? I think this one is so is really hard to call. I, I don't know. Yeah. I do agree with you saying you need to you need to wait for the for the thirty five game and, and yeah. then see who who plays in that one because it's a tough one. If you know that Isaac is going to get more minutes, then you lean towards that. But then, as you mm. say, Wilson. I mean, I was just looking at his stats there. Quietly has fifteen goals this season and yeah, hasn't crazy. started too many games even before this this recent run of eight goals and with only yeah. two starts. So he doesn't need the minutes in the same way that Isaac yeah. probably does. So many chances fall to him. He is a great striker when he's fit. So it is a tough one. Also, another thing that's massive is if we speak about captaincy in 36, then that adds even more of a swing because it, yes, you could go with a trippier, but I think that, that Wilson and Isaac have to be options as well. And if you're going to captain one of those, it makes that decision twice as twice as important. So in terms of yeah. captaincy for that week, a little mention on that. <laughs> Any idea who you'd go for? I mean, we're jumping ahead here, but... Yeah, it's interesting though, isn't it? Because especially yeah. with Captain C, you know, assuming we don't get, if as long as there's no bad news regarding Harlan yeah. for this week, at home to Leeds, no double game weeks for anyone, it's just going to be Harlan captain, easy peasy. But well, yeah, you know, for, actually, let's talk about that a second because I, I, I do want to just hear your thoughts on his expected minutes this week because they do have a lot I, of fixtures coming up. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not too worried 
I, I don't know. Pep is ballsy enough to rest big players even when he does need points. But the good thing, the good thing for Man City assets actually is Arsenal winning last night, for example. And yeah. if Arsenal keep if Arsenal keep winning, you know, people say, oh, Man City's um uh priorities the Champions League. Yes, I know. Okay, yeah. it is, but they still want to win the league. They're not going to play the B team in the league when they haven't got it wrapped up. So the longer Arsenal can keep the title race going and keep it not actually sewn up, I think the, the more chance of now, uh, yeah, their their A team playing as such. Mm. Um, but yeah, it really it does depend on on his minutes. And again, I wouldn't worry too much. I wouldn't overthink it. Like I said, if if we get news that he's not starting, then maybe. But assuming that doesn't happen then for me, it'll be Captain Haaland because you, we know what he can do in 45 minutes. It, you know, City could win that be 3 4 and up at half time. He gets dragged off, but he's already got a brace and he's already got the 12 points in the bag or whatever it is. So, yeah, I don't worry about his expected minutes. And again, if he has the last half an hour against a tired lead side, they create two chances for him. He probably scores yeah. them both and he again gets a big haul. So even if you get the, you know, even if you predict his bench and you get it right, you could end up being stung. So for me, yeah, I don't think. I just can't see myself overthinking it and changing captaincy to someone else when he's got leads at home, who are obviously not very good at the minute, even with Big Sam coming in and City is in blistering form. Harlan's in great form himself. So yeah, I'm not going to overthink that. If he does get reduced minutes like we've seen in other weeks, I, I think he'll just hopefully get the points in the back. I think, yeah, exactly. Harland at home. I mean, we saw even against the second yeah. best team in the league this season, it's it's still like, it's just a, Frightening. It's a formality, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and I think so, they've, been, they've been they've been clever. Pep's been clever with him this season and giving him rest when he needs to and, and manage his minutes. Yeah. Um. Obviously, yes, we know Champions League's around the corner, so maybe who knows? Maybe he does, but um, uh, you know, maybe there will be some clever people out there who do bench Haaland and he does only get the last fifteen minutes and he blanks. Fine, but yeah, I just don't see me running that risk of gambling on predicting Pep when Haaland has started the large majority of games this season and, like I've already said, he can score points in reduced minutes anyway. And also, if you do, if he doesn't come on, say the game is won, yeah, and yeah. Alvarez has a great game. I mean, then he, then you just you nice have your vice anyway, yeah, yeah. So there's no real risk there. Thoughts on Alvarez at all for this week? If if we yeah. do get news that Haaland may not be starting, what do you think in there? I'm glad you said about that. And also, if we get news that De Bruyne, if De Bruyne's still yeah. out, Alvarez is likely to continue in that sort of second striker role, or or however you want to define it. When he replaced De Bruyne for that Fulham away game, didn't he? He obviously got the assist for the penalty, won that in a clever way. And obviously scored a worldie. So, yeah, I like Alvarez. The problem I have with bringing him in, let's say if you did take a punt on him this week for Leeds at home because you knew De Bruyne's injured or you knew Haaland's getting a wrestle, whatever, then you'll probably, you should get some points in the bag this week. Fine. But then when he has that double in 37, you know, is is, is De Bruyne going to be back? Is is Alvarez going to go back, back to being a bench player? Mm. I guess you could gamble at that point and just think, right, okay, it's hard to pick City, nailed on City assets anyway, in defence and in midfield. So you could get Alvarez and in the double, you know, a bit like with an Isaac or Wilson situation, expect reduced minutes from someone like Alvarez, but hope for points when he does cameo in the last 20 minutes or hope he gets a start and does well, which is, again, possibility. Especially, I guess, if in if City have the league wrapped up by the time double game at 37 rolls around, I guess Alvarez will get used more in the league. So, yeah, I'm actually... Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not against an Alvarez move this week. In the past, I'd have warned against it, and obviously rightly so, because his minutes have just not been good enough for an FPL asset. Um, but he's obviously an amazing player. So, yeah, I think right now actually could be a good time to gamble on him, but just don't be upset if he gets benched in some of these games because, you know, you've got to expect that and you've just got to hope for points for the bench when that does happen. Yeah, I think it's a really hard one with, with the Man City slots as well because I feel like we're going to need three at some point and the three might reveal themselves, but we don't really know what those are right now. Let's go yeah. to your transfer plans. Final thing for this video. Yeah, let's, let's go do. to your transfer plans for, for this week and the next week and just walk us through yeah. what you're thinking right now. Yeah, so there's a few different ways I could go. I've already got the triple Newcastle, triple Brighton, so I don't have to plan for that week. I could do some surgery to get to Wilson Isaac, like I mentioned earlier, take out the likes of a trip here for, a, say, a John Stones this week. Um, and then maybe next week, then go Greenwood up to Wilson. But like I said, I think that will mean a minus four elsewhere as well. So I'll probably have to like, you know, free up some money from Raya. That's seeming right. a little, un that's less likely for me right now. I think, I think I'm just going to play it quite straightforward and possibly do something like Pinnock to a city defender, the likes of Stones or Diaz, and then play that city defender this week against okay. Leeds at home. 
rather than having to play a Newcastle defender against Arsenal at home, which could yeah. work out. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not ruling out the possibility of a Newcastle win and a clean sheet in that one. So I don't think it's the worst thing in the world playing a Newcastle defender in that one. Um, but on this, you know, to contradict myself almost, it is still Arsenal. They are still one of the top two teams in the league and they are still in, in decent of goal scoring form. So, and Newcastle's defence form isn't great. So yeah, I think for my team, it makes sense. I don't really want to touch the midfield mm-hmm. um, because they all have double games to come apart from Salah, who's obviously a good asset without the doubles. Um, and I don't want to touch my forwards because they have doubles as well and are obviously good assets in Isaac and Haaland. So yeah, bolstering my defence. And again, it's more, it's it's to attack the fixture this week, Leeds at home, and it's to bring one in for the double game week in 37. But again, like you've kind of alluded to, it's better to almost, it's it could be better to wait to see who does emerge as the best City assets. If De Bruyne has a long-term injury or whatever, then Alvarez might be the pick or whatever, because I do have enough money in the bank to go Greenwood to... Um, Alvarez, Alvarez, yeah. Alvarez, sorry. But again, that the reason I got Greenwood was to, not the only reason, but I've got like 2.1 million in the bank. I, I wanted Greenwood to be that cheap player so I could just play that front seven week in, week out. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I do like because it means you're not, you know, you're not benching points and you're not, you're not, uh, you're not making mistakes benching all that. I got away with it for a few weeks. I benched Fernandez a couple of times, but I yeah. did get lucky. I benched Fernandez away at, um, United when I thought he was injured to be fair he only got five points it wasn't too bad but the other game was I benched him away at Forest and Fernandez was incredible that day so I got you know hands oh, up I got incredibly that lucky incredible. That, was in- that game was absolutely incredible to watch as an, as an owner yeah. the points dodging was unbelievable although I will say yeah. that he got he got fortunate in the last game because yeah. the, the stats show that he, he probably wasn't as as deserving of a of a, yeah. of a haul but 11 was, points uh, not to be sniffed at it was a bit of a smelly little goal with a rush yeah, assist as well. So exactly, we'll it, wasn't, it. it wasn't the greatest of goals. Yeah. But yeah. A good, um, a good fantasy goal there. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, three bonus points as well. Which yeah, is nice. exactly. So yeah, that, that's my point. So let's say I do do uh, uh, Greenwood to Alvarez this week. Then it's a question of, okay, fine. Who do I bench? Do I bench yeah. Brian players at home to Everton? Um, I don't really want to do that. Uh, the Man United midfielders away at West Ham again. Don't really want to do that. Salah at home to Brentford, but etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Do I bench maybe Nizak at home to Arsenal? Maybe. Um, so, so it's an option, but again, it then goes back to juggling the bench every week, and it means tying up money in the front eight rather than as of right now, I've got that two million in the bank to attack um, elsewhere if I need it. Um, rather than tying it up in the eighth player and then rotating for the last four or five games of the season, but it is an option. So yeah, Greenwood to Alvarez is another uh, uh, another option, uh, but I do like the idea of bringing in a City asset this week for Leeds at home, and also in preparation for the double game at thirty seven. Because it, just a quick note on double game at thirty seven: there's four teams doubling that week. I've got Triple United in the bag, I've got Triple Brighton in the bag. I don't want any Chelsea players because their form's obviously horrendous and their doubles awful anyway. Even if Chelsea are in good form, I think it's both Manchester clubs away, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so again, do you really want to go mental on? You know, if you've if you've already got a Kepper in place who will get some safe points, fine. But um, everyone else right now at Chelsea for me is a, is a no go. Even with if they had a good double, I'd possibly be saying the same. But with a yeah. bad double, bad bad double, bad form, I'm not looking at them. So I'm looking at only a maximum of nine double game players. Um, and the one team I'm lacking on right now is City uh, because I took out Grealish last week. I opted to hold Fernandez rather than Grealish, and I actually took the minus four last week. Um, in order to achieve Trent. So yeah, we didn't do a video last week because I was a bit sick, but essentially my, my moves last week for people who don't know was Trent in uh, for Chilwell, Rashford in for Grealish, and then to accommodate, to to afford that, I lost Watkins down to a Greenwood um, and also left some money out, left over the bank. So the transfers have worked out so far. Again, I got a little bit fortunate with Grealish hitting the bar in his game, to be fair. Um, but yeah. yeah, just looking at some stats, I, I felt like holding Fernandes was better. Let's talk about Grealish finally, because he is a really interesting one. He's in my team, for example. Yeah. And obviously, you know, he's got great fixtures. There's a lot of upside there in theory. Mm-hmm. And he did seem to point... I mean, it was a good... It was a save from Leno. I would have expected him to save it. I think it was a little bit fortunate, to be fair, that it hit the bar. But he had some chances yeah, in that yeah. game anyway. He could have got yeah. an assist easily. But yeah. what are your thoughts on him compared to other City assets in general going forward? Obviously, we don't know the best three right now, but what do you think... Yeah. But yeah, for, for me, I didn't. I had him in my team as well. It, it wasn't like I was desperate to get rid of him, especially ahead of a double game week. Yeah. Um, and with another double game week in the future. But for me, it was like, okay, how do I get? I wanted Rashford back in um, yeah. for their double and a future double. 
and I didn't want to lose, you know, Salah before a double. And I decided, I originally was thinking Fernandez to Rashford, but then I just couldn't do it because of Fernandez's stats and, and eye test essentially on, on Fernandez. Mm. And now, I, and if you compare historical stats for Fernandez, a lot of those would include when he was playing defensive mid because Casemiro and Eriksen were out. Now they're back. That pushes Fernandez further forward to attack him mid or attack him right mid sometimes with, you know, he's quite flexible, isn't he? Quite versatile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I just didn't want to lose Fernandez. But back to Greedish compared to other City assets, I do think he's the most nailed on City midfielder, especially with De Bruyne. If De Bruyne's got no injury issues, then fine. But, you know, they are a bit careful with De Bruyne's minutes sometimes. And um, even in big games, I've seen Pep actually sub De Bruyne off or, or leave him out a little bit. So, and yeah, like I said, with the injury concerns, so Grealish has been really, ne- like, probably the most nailed on City midfielder since the World Cup, I'd say, or the last, I don't know, 10, 12 game weeks. However, for most of those game weeks, Foden's been out. Now Foden's back. I'm not saying Foden's just going to, you know, come back, click your fingers and he just takes Grealish's position. I'm not saying that at all, but I am saying that Grealish hasn't had much competition in that left wing slot. Mares and Bernardo Silva, um, and maybe even someone like Alvarez or someone else maybe has has shared that sort of right wing slot over the last few game weeks. Yeah. Um, but there's been no one really to challenge Jack on the left because Mares only plays right, doesn't he? And Bernardo Silva, okay, maybe maybe occasionally plays on the left, but not very not often. Barely. So and Grealish, yeah. yeah. So Grealish has locked down that left wing position. However, Foden is very flexible, isn't he? Very versatile, can play across the front. So will Foden take some of Grealish's minutes? Um over the next few weeks in preparation, you know, just to rest Grealish a little bit because he's played, Grealish is so nailed on so far, which is what, one of the reasons I got him in originally was because yeah. of how many 90 minutes he was getting and he was such an integral player. And I think he still is, so I'm not trying to warn ev- anyone off Grealish or tell you to sell him. But uh, yeah, I just worry a little bit with Foden. Um, I feel in that Arsenal game, he didn't look like getting any attacking returns. Grealish, he was really wide, but like you said, against Fulham, he was getting cutting in and having shots. Not not great shots, but getting into those positions. And like you said, he could have definitely had an assist as well. So, yeah, I think he's worth keeping, um, depending on unless you want to juggle elsewhere. But yeah, with De Bruyne out injured, if, you, if you're looking at Triple City, what is the what is the perfect City triple up if we forget other, you know, if we're looking at my midfield, it's a bit stacked already. So maybe I, I personally can't. But if we forget context and just say the best three City assets going forward, is it Haaland, Alvarez, Grealish, is it Haaland and double defence? What do you think it is? I think it's Haaland uh, and then either a keeper or defender and mm. Alvarez and having mm. eight attackers potentially and being prepared to bench Alvarez or another attacker and going... Like, I think that would Which, accrue yeah. the most points if you got quite fortunate with how the um, okay, how the minutes yeah. landed and if you got lucky yeah. with, with who you bench in a certain game week. I think there's obviously yeah. a lot of risk there that you could bench a... A player that gets a haul, especially with a lot of these fixtures, as we as we saw with yeah. the eight eight players that you may have going forward. But I think Alvarez's upside is huge. Yeah. Um, so if, for the most points, I think Alvarez is the play, but that also might be the most pain. Who knows? Mm. So what what have you got in the minute? Harlan and Grealish. I have Harlan Grealish and Edison, and and oh, I th- I three. knew I was locking yeah. myself into three, but I thought. That's okay. And I wanted, and I did want three for this double, and of course they're yeah. in for thirty-seven. But I knew the risk of of them potentially not being the best three. I mean, I'm I'm fine with Edison, but Grealish was the yeah. one where I was a little bit like I could have sold them this week as well, like you did. Yeah, there, there there might be a way of not a bit like my Newcastle plan, which isn't necessarily perfect of sort of jumping off one to three mm. of a slot. There is there is a situation where you could potentially four minus or maybe by saving up a transfer. There is a there is a world where you do do. Grealish and one of, and your third striker to Alvarez and a different midfielder. Yeah, there yeah. is a possible, there is a way of doing that. It does yeah. mean you potentially neglect other areas of your team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And do you want to take out a Seti asset, etc.? But yeah, I think it's an interesting conundrum actually. And I, mm. I don't. Well, I was just I, I was thinking because it. if we get if we do get early team news, say mm. that that Haaland is benched or you know that Alvarez is definitely starting. And Alvarez yeah. looks like he could be the best captain option for Leeds at home. Then it might be worth doing that switch from Greenish. I don't know. It's a it's one yeah. of those where it, it is risky because yeah, it's definitely going to be for a hit. And Alvarez isn't if a player you, that you necessarily want long term. Who knows? But we're we're getting we're getting to the final stages now. I don't know. Yeah, and I think he does get enough. I think he does get enough minutes over the next few weeks, especially with Hart. You know, it, Pep maybe want to rest in the likes of Haaland and De Bruyne for the Champions League. 
Mm. especially should they get to the final and stuff like that and they've got the FA Cup final after the season haven't they so I think and with Alvarez's form being so good I could, yeah. I could see him getting a decent amount of minutes over these next few um, so yeah I, I like that shout from you and maybe even triple attack if you could if Why you not? worm it so maybe there's a if you went from say Edison to Steele maybe you've already got three Brighton but Edison to a, a De Gea or whatever yeah. it might be or even a Kepa for those double game weeks and then you've freed up a slot um that could be the way to go then you've got tri triple city attack could be really powerful for that, that especially double. if they keep conceding silly goals because they're, they're so good that they just lose their focus and concede goals it's, yeah. it's ridiculous really yeah it's been a really frustrating one I've, i tweeted about edison uh recently about how you know it was only one shot on target face it goes in he gets a yellow card for time wasting because obviously city <laughs> are winning and then he gets uh yeah no clean sheet or no save points and that's what happened i had edison for a period in the season when it was really frustrating it was it was around um i bought him in in place of kepper for a minus four because i think game it's 22 to 26 that sort of time city had a couple of double game weeks and chelsea had none so i was like right for a minus four yeah we're getting a keeper from a bet for a team more likely to keep clean sheets maybe less save points but the clean sheets will counteract that that was my logic anyway and those two extra the, the two double game weeks perfect get Edison in no worries about rotation and defence and he just did the same thing he was just conceding one goal in every game never making save points um, and occasionally getting yellows as well and he was just a really frustrating keeper to own um, but having said all that and I've got a sort of negative bias against him because of that I still think he is actually a solid pick going forward because he is the safest route in those clean sheets yeah clean sheets should come because they're, if, if you only let in one shot on target per game, I know they're not, that's not an exact stat, but it was against Fulham, for example. It's not too, it's not too far off. No, it, you've got a, you have to have a really good chance of a clean sheet when that's happening. Mm. It just, it, it has to happen. Um, so yeah, they do have good clean sheet potential and he is that safest route in there. So I wouldn't be rushing to transfer him out. But my only thing where I was saying to you is, if you did want that triple attack, maybe it could be a route to do so. Yeah. If you wish to get Alvarez, maybe. It's definitely one to think about because that no doubt the upside is there with a City player. I think, you know, we talk about Mares quite a lot and say, mm. oh, he doesn't get in the team, but then he'll have that game where he explodes and get 18, gets 18 points. Yeah, yeah. That is coming. And I would not be shocked if a City player comes away with minimum 15 points outside of Haaland against Leeds this week. I know they're getting, yeah. a, I know they've got a new manager and all, but still, yeah. they're all over the place. That, but uh, yeah. I, th I think the key news to weigh out for then is De Bruyne's injury, I guess, if he's yeah. back in the squad for... This obviously we haven't got, we haven't had the second fixture for the for the double yet, have we? If he's back in the squad yeah. for West Ham, then obviously that would indicate potentially bad news for Alvarez. But like you said, listen out for news about De Bruyne being rested or Harlem being rested. And if one of those two is rested, the player to come in for either of those players would be Alvarez. Okay, then guys, that is going to do it for this one. Again, if you do want to mess about with your team like we have done with Wes's and seeing potential future transfers and strategies. And the link to use the Fantasy Football Hub My Team Tool is down below. For me, I'm a bit of a visual learner. It just it's so much easier seeing my potential transfers and money in the bank, etc., than yeah. what I used to do, which was on a spreadsheet. It was just so hard. I tried to color code it. I'm very thankful now that tools like this exist. So yeah, do get down in the description and click on that. And with that all being said, Wes, thank you very much as always. And we will see you guys on the next one. <laughs>